Mark, thanks so much. In 1993, the Supreme Court gave the executive branch the go-ahead to prevent a Haitian migration crisis by sea. Not mincing words, the court concluded that it is perfectly clear that the Immigration and Nationality Act grants the president ample power to establish a naval blockade that would simply deny illegal Haitian migrants the ability to disembark on our shores. I read this to mean that DHS can interrupt Haitian marine flotillas in international waters and return the intending illegal migrants to Haiti without having to entertain and adjudicate claims for asylum, for withholding of removal based on uh, uh, possible persecution. Thus, President Biden has the green light to prevent any new Haitian migration crisis uh, by sea, should he want to. I'm going to briefly outline the history of the Haitian migration crises since George H.W. Bush's presidency and then discuss what exactly the Supreme Court ruled and why it ruled that way. I'll also discuss the main legal issue that is still really undecided, which is, does the DHS have the same latitude to intercept boats from Haiti or other countries in U.S. territorial waters and return the occupants without uh, screening them uh, for uh, purported uh, uh, fears of persecution and things of that nature. And uh, that would affect areas between possibly three or 12 miles uh, from uh, from the U.S. coastline. So in September 1981, President Reagan issued a proclamation in which he found that the continuing illegal migration by sea of large numbers of undocumented aliens into the southeastern U.S. was a serious national problem, detrimental to the interests of the United States. He suspended the entry of illegal aliens from the high seas and ordered the Coast Guard to intercept vessels carrying them and to return them from whence they came. However, President Reagan's order explicitly said no person who is a refugee will be returned without his consent. The Supreme Court in the 1993 decision, Sale versus Haitian uh, Centers Council, described what happened next. In the ensuing decade, the Coast Guard interdicted approximately 25,000 Haitian migrants. After interviews conducted on board Coast Guard cutters, aliens who were identified as economic migrants were screened out and promptly repatriated. Those who made a credible showing of political refugee status were screened in and transported to the U.S. for formal applications uh, for asylum. In September 1991, a group of military leaders displaced the Haitian government of Jean-Bertrand Aristide. Since the coup, hundreds of Haitians had been killed, tortured, detained without a warrant, or subjected to violence or the destruction of their property, because of their political beliefs, in the words of the Supreme Court. During the six months after October 1991, the Coast Guard interdicted over 34,000 Haitians. Because so many could not be safely processed on Coast Guard cutters, the Department of Defense established facilities at Guantanamo Bay in Cuba to accommodate them during the screening process for withholding of removal. Those temporary facilities, however, had a capacity of only about 12,500 persons. In the first three weeks of May 1992, the Coast Guard intercepted over 100 vessels carrying over 10,000 illegal aliens, or intending illegal aliens. In May 1992, the United States Navy determined that no additional migrants could safely be accommodated at Guantanamo. So what to do? What was President Bush to do? As the Supreme Court put it, he had a decision to make. With both the facilities at Guantanamo and available Coast Guard cutters saturated, and with the number of Haitian immigrants in in unseaworthy craft increasing, many had drowned as as they attempted the trip to Florida, the government could no longer both protect our borders and offer the Haitians even a modified screening process. It had to choose between allowing Haitians into the U.S. for screening or repatriating them without giving them the opportunity to establish their qualifications as refugees. 
In the judgment of the president's advisors, the first choice not only would have defeated the original purpose of the interdiction program, controlling illegal immigration, but also would have impeded diplomatic efforts to restore democratic government in Haiti and would have posed a life-threatening danger to thousands of persons embarking on long voyages in dangerous craft. So what did President Bush do? As the court wrote, he adopted the second choice. He directed the Coast Guard to intercept vessels illegally transporting passengers from Haiti to the U.S. and to return those passengers to Haiti without first determining whether they may qualify as refugees. And after assuming office, President Clinton decided to not modify that decision and to keep that policy. I actually have a friend uh, who told me he was in the State Department uh, at the time uh, and watched the Haiti policy come together. And during the election campaign, they were attacked uh, by the Clinton campaign. Uh, um, and then the Clinton campaign or the, the Clinton administration decided to keep the policy anyway. And my friend asked uh, uh, people uh, within uh, the Clinton administration what was going on. And the response was, yes, we have the same policy, but we feel bad about it. So I guess that was the difference between the uh, Bush administration and the Clinton administration. In any event, President Bush issued an executive order relying on his powers under the Immigration and Nationality Act to suspend the entry of all aliens or any class of aliens as immigrants or non-immigrants, or impose upon the entry of aliens any restrictions appropriate when he finds that the entry of such aliens would be detrimental to the interests of the United States. His order provided in part, uh, President uh, Reagan's proclamation suspended the entry of all undocumented aliens into the US by the high seas. Appropriate instruction shall be issued to the Coast Guard in order to enforce the suspension of the entry of undocumented aliens by sea and the interdiction of any defined vessels uh, carrying such aliens. Um, it goes on. But in any event, these actions are authorized to be undertaken only beyond the territorial sea of the United States. That was part of the president's uh, decision. And the order shall not be construed to require any procedure to determine whether a person is a refugee. Obviously, litigation ensued. Uh, uh, the administration was sued. Uh, litigants were seeking a temporary restraining order to prevent implementation of the order, contending that it violated the Immigration and Nationality Act's uh, mandate of withholding of removal, that no alien be re re returned, removed, uh, to a country uh, where um, their life or freedom would be endangered, essentially uh, where it was more likely and, or more likely than not uh, that they would be persecuted, got up to the Supreme Court, and the Supreme Court ruled the president has directed the Coast Guard to intercept vessels illegally transporting passengers from Haiti and to return those passengers to Haiti without first determining whether they may qualify as refugees. The question presented is whether such forced repatriation authorized to be undertaken only beyond the territorial seas of the U.S. violates uh, the Immigration and Nationality Act's withholding of removal provision. Um, that was the decision for the Supreme Court. In an eight to one decision, the court affirmed the federal government's ability to repatriate aliens interdicted on the high seas without having to screen them for withholding, ruling that neither the withholding statute nor the uh, uh, refugee protocol to which the U.S. is a signatory applies to actions taken by the Coast Guard on the high seas beyond the territorial sea of the U.S. That's the go-ahead, the, the green light that President Biden has should he decide to, um, to utilize it. What was the court's rationale? Some of the court's rationales are still apply under current law. Some have been rendered OBE, overtaken by events because of changes in the law. But let me quickly uh, summarize them. The first, the withholding of removal statute um, says the attorney general must, uh, cannot re return, remove an alien in those circumstances. And the court ruled uh, 
we cannot say that the interdiction program created by the president, which the Coast Guard was ordered to enforce, usurped authority that Congress has delegated to the Attorney General alone. The reference to the Attorney General in the statutory text is significant because that term cannot reasonably construed, be construed to describe either the President or the Coast Guard. Uh, it's uh, interesting that since that decision, uh, the Department of Homeland Security was created and the Coast Guard was actually placed in the Department of Homeland Security. So that rationale would no longer uh, suffice under current law. But the Supreme Court's main decision what main rationale was that the withholding of removal mandate only applies in areas where removal proceedings can be conducted, because that is when people make application. That is where withholding of removal is considered. Removal proceedings occur in the United States, not outside the United States, and therefore nothing that occurs outside the United States um, uh, is subject to with to the withholding mandate. Uh, as, as I indicated, I'll, I'll just briefly note that it's still an open question as to whether this, the same policy can be undertaken in the territorial waters of the United States. But uh, Walter Dellinger, President Clinton's uh, assistant attorney general for the Office of Legal Counsel and later President Clinton's solicitor general, issued an opinion in 1993 that, yes, uh, the same rules apply in U.S. territorial waters. Um, aliens can be returned, repatriated, without uh, screening for withholding of removal for asylum. That's never been tested in court. But uh, Mr. Dellinger was a liberal icon. He has a very, made a very compelling case, and I would hope that courts would consider it.